If you're interested in purchasing a Synology NAS for backing up your home computers or small business, or if you already have one and you just wanna learn how to get started, then this is the video for you. Stay tuned. The features of the Synology NAS tend to be pretty overwhelming for users who are just getting started with this platform. So in this video, we're going to talk about the various options related to purchasing a Synology NAS, such as how much drive space you need, as well as what kind of drives. And then we're going to go through the initial setup of the device and configure it for use with the built-in Windows backup software. Because let's face it, most people buy these things because they want a centralized redundant backup solution for their computers and data. Synology makes lots of different types of hardware, primarily focused around NAS or network attached storage, but they have been branching out into different kinds of equipment such as routers, access points, and NVRs. But in reality, Synology is actually a software company. They have a ton of applications that come with their devices and even more apps that can be installed directly from within the DSM or Disk Station Manager, which is essentially the operating system that runs on their NAS devices. Synology makes all levels of devices from Soho through Enterprise, but today we're going to focus on the lower end of the spectrum. Here I have the Disk Station DS218 Plus, which is a great entry level NAS that should be good for any home user or small business with generic basic backup and storage needs. The DS218 Plus has a dual core 2.5 GHz CPU and it has a gigabit NIC on the back. It can do encrypted transfers, encrypted transfers, at 113 megabytes per second read and 112 megabytes per second write, as well as 4K Ultra HD video transcoding, if that's something that you're gonna be using this box for. Now again, we're not gonna get into all of the fancy features of this little NAS, that would just take way, way too long. However, if you're interested in videos on what you can do with Synology, put those requests down in the comments below and I will see what I can do. On the front of this device, we have buttons for power and USB copy, which allows you to plug in a USB thumb drive and copy all of the contents to the NAS. There's a single USB 3 port and then some status lights for power, LAN, and disk activity. On the back of the Synology NAS, we have two more USB 3.0 ports, a reset button, an eSATA port, a Kensington lock port, gigabit ethernet, and power. Now, Synology sent this to me with two 8 terabyte Seagate Iron Wolf hard drives pre-installed. Now, these are great drives, but I would also recommend the Western Digital Red series of NAS drives, and I'll put links to all of this equipment down in the description below. 8 terabytes may actually be overkill for most home users, though, so how much space do you actually need? Well, I have a simple rule for determining space requirements, and that rule is to measure how much data you currently have multiply that by two, and then round up to the next higher sized hard drive. For instance, if you have 1.5 terabytes worth of data, double that to three terabytes, and then round up to four terabyte hard drives for your own Synology NAS. Now that measurement is just a general rule of thumb that I use, however, it may not work for everyone. Just use your best judgment and remember that with hard drive space, it's always better to overestimate rather than underestimate. Once you have your hard drives, you simply install them into these drive trays and then slide them right into the front of your Synology NAS device and you are good to go. Next, you'll want to plug in a network cable and the power and then hit the power button on the front and now this thing is ready for initial setup. My disk station is now plugged in, it's ready to go. You can see there's a blinking yellow status light which means that it's ready to set up. So in order to set it up, you first wanna make sure that this is plugged into the same local area network that your computer is plugged into that you're gonna be using to configure it. Once you have a computer plugged into the same local area network, you wanna to navigate to http colon slash slash disk station, all one word, colon 5000. So once you navigate to disk station colon 5000, you're gonna get this welcome slash setup screen and we're gonna go ahead and say set up. First, it's gonna ask if we wanna install the Disk Station Manager. That, again, is the operating system for the Synology NAS. We're gonna go ahead and say, yes, install now. All data on hard drives one and two will be removed during installation. Are you sure you want to proceed? Yes, I understand, and okay. And now it's gonna install the Disk Station Manager, which takes approximately 10 minutes. Once the DSM installation is finished, you're brought to the Create Your Administrator Account page. So we're gonna name our server, Crosstalk NAS, 
And then we want to give a username and password. This is going to be used to log into your disk station uh, from here on out. So we'll say crosstalk and I'll give it a nice strong password. And once you're done there, click next. And now we're asked what we want to do about updates and maintenance. So we can install the latest DSM automatically. We can have it install only important updates automatically, or we can just have it notify us uh, when there's a new version of DSM or security updates, and then we can install them manually. So for our purposes, I'm just going to have everything done automatic, and the installation schedule of Sunday and Wednesday at 2 o'clock in the morning, that's perfectly fine for me. Click Next. And now we are given the option to connect to our Synology account. Now, Quick Connect allows us to use a special URL, which is http colon slash slash quickconnect.to slash and then the Quick Connect ID. So I already have this set up um, and we're going to say create Quick Connect ID with an existing Synology account. And then we're going to hit Next. Okay, now we are given the option to drag a bookmark to our desktop. So I highly suggest you do that. Let's move this out of the way. So we can see our Quick Connect URL, but let's go ahead and drag this out as well. And now I have a shortcut on the desktop for the Synology NAS. Okay, click next to continue. And now it says install Synology's recommended packages. If you don't know what you're doing here and you don't know what all these packages are, uh, just go ahead and click next. This is sort of a default base set of packages that'll help get you going with your disk station. I'm going to say I have read the terms of service and I acknowledge the privacy statement and install. You are all set. Let's take a quick guided tour of DSM. Okay, we're going to say go. And now it says Synology needs your help in enabling us to improve data analytics. I'm going to say no thanks. So here's our quick guided tour. Tip one, access all built in and installed packages from the main menu that's up here in the corner. Tip two, discover more applications in the package center. Tip three, more settings are available at the control panel. And here we go, we are now into our Synology disk station DS218. Here's the help screen. I'm just gonna say okay and close out help for now. And what we can see here on the dashboard are again, the important things. Here's our main menu of items. And it's telling us if we want to create shortcuts to any of these extra items, we can just drag and drop those to the desktop. Uh, for our purposes though, we're not gonna do that. Package Center allows us to install updates. It also allows us to install all sorts of different other applications. So for instance, here's Active Backup for Office 365, Active Backup for, Backup for G Suite, etc. So if you wanna install any of these other things, and there's just a ton, a ton, a ton of stuff to install, uh, you can do that here. In our cases though, uh, if we click on Install, we can see that we have one update necessary. So I'm gonna go ahead and say Update All. Okay, while that's updating, here we can see in the bottom right-hand corner a couple of widgets. We have a system health widget, shows us our IP address, our uptime, the server name. Down below we have our resource, resource monitor showing us our CPU, RAM, and LAN utilization. One thing that we don't see by default though is how much disk space do we have available. So you can add that widget and to do that we just click plus and then we want to select storage. That gives us one additional widget, and now I'm gonna move this up here into the corner, pull it down so that we could see the extra widget, and I'm just gonna sort of rearrange these widgets in the way that I like, which is system health on top, then resource monitor, and then we have our storage down here at the bottom, where right now we could see we have 6.98 terabytes of storage available, basically meaning that we've installed the operating system and uh, nothing else. So we have 1% utilization on our eight terabyte hard drives. By default, the Synology NAS gets its IP address on your network from DHCP. However, we probably want to set a static IP address, or at least it's my preference to set a static IP address on the disk station so that I always know which IP address it has on the network. So let's go ahead and do that next. I'm going to click on control panel. And then we're going to click on the network icon. And then we're going to click on network interface. And we have three network interfaces here, LAN, PPPoE, and then IPv6 tunneling. The only one we're concerned about is LAN. So we're going to make sure that LAN is selected and we're going to click edit. Here we have get network configuration automatically. That's DHCP as I had mentioned. Instead, we're going to set this to use manual configuration. And I'm gonna set this to an IP address that I know is available and it's outside of the IP addresses that are handed out to devices by DHCP. So it's going to be .10. So in my network, it's 192.168.200.10. Your network will probably look different from mine. But once you've set the IP address statically, you can say okay. 
And then after about a minute or so, you can close that out and then use the shortcut that you put on your desktop earlier. So here's the Crosstalk NAS shortcut. We're gonna double click that. Oop, opened up in a different window. We're gonna bring it over and it will have a sign in. Okay, and as you can see, I used that link and now my new IP address or the link has redirected me to 192.168.200.10 on port 5000. Okay, so finally, let's get to our backup settings. Now my computer here, I need this data, my pictures, my documents, my videos, I want it backed up to my Synology NAS. So how do we do that? The first thing we wanna do is go over here to File Station. So we're gonna click on that. Let me make this a little bit bigger. And we're gonna say Create New Shared Folder. The name of the folder, I'm gonna call it uh, Backups. We'll make it real obvious here. We're gonna say Main Backup Folder. The volume that I'm gonna use is volume one. Again, in this is this is a very simple example of Synology NAS. There is only one volume here. We have a RAID 1 set of eight terabyte hard drives. That's all we have in this device. But I am gonna come down here to empty or to enable recycle bin, and I'm gonna uncheck that. So if I was using the, this Synology NAS volume as an actual data directory where I might be working off of items, you know, like a shared folder environment for a small business or something like that, then I would probably want to enable the recycle bin because that's gonna help against unintentionally deleting stuff that you didn't want to. But in my case, I'm only using this as a backup volume or a backup shared folder. So anything that's gonna be in this shared folder is not gonna be worked on continuously, it's just gonna be a backup of my machine. So I don't need to worry about the recycle bin. And we're gonna go ahead and say next. Now this gives us the option to encrypt the shared folder. I would like to do a video on encrypting these shared folders, but that I'm going to save for a more advanced video, perhaps on general NAS security. Uh, let me know if you're interested in that in the comments below. For now though, we're not gonna encrypt the shared folder. We're just gonna click next. And here we have a couple of other options. If you don't know what you're doing here, just click next. That's what I'm gonna do. Um, this data checksum for advanced data integrity. That's basically some checks of the hard drives that it runs periodically. However, if you're doing something like you have a database application running off of the Synology NAS or something like that, then you definitely do not want to check that box. Uh, in our case though, I'm just gonna say next, we're gonna take the defaults and then we get a little sort of shared folder creation summary. We're gonna click apply. Now we're brought to permissions. So we have the admin, then we have the crosstalk user, and then we have guest. Now I'm just gonna use the crosstalk user for backing up files to this location. We'll see that in a second, but I do wanna make sure that the crosstalk user has read and write access to this shared folder. I'll also give read and write access to admin, and then we're gonna give no access to the guest user, and we're gonna say okay. Now we have a backups folder created, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to map this folder as a drive on my Windows PC. So I'm gonna use the Z drive for that. That's just the drive that I like to use for backups. You can use whatever drive letter you want. So I'm gonna say Windows E to pop open Windows Explorer, and I'm gonna click on this PC, and we can go to Computer and then Map Network Drive. Now it says, which network folder would you like to map? So the drive letter I've selected is Z, and we're gonna say here, so backslash backslash server backslash share. So that's gonna be backslash backslash 192.168.200.10 backslash backups. We're gonna reconnect it, sign in, and then we wanna connect using different credentials. So we're gonna say finish, and then it's gonna ask what credentials do you want to use? Now your screen might look a little bit different than mine. I've been messing around with this backup stuff a lot, so I have this old backup user thing that's sitting in here. We're gonna click more choices. We're gonna use a different account, and we're gonna use that crosstalk account that we set up during the initial installation. So I'm gonna say crosstalk, and then the password for that. And then I'm gonna check remember my credentials, and we're gonna say okay. And now we have the Z drive map, so we can see that I am in Z drive. So that's great, we now have my computer connected to the Synology NAS, it's using the Z drive as a backup folder, but now we need to actually back up our data to the NAS, so to do that, there's all sorts of different backup programs that you can use, and I will probably do a couple videos on a few of the different options, but for this video, I'm just gonna use the built-in Windows backup, and to get to that, you basically just wanna start, click on the start menu and start typing backup, and then you're gonna see, it'll say Windows backup. Click on that, and here we have backup using file history. We're gonna say add a drive, 
and it has found our Z drive. So we're going to click on backups, and then we're going to click on more options. Now under more options, we can say that see the total space on backups is 6.98 terabytes available. Your data is not yet backed up. So now we have two sections down here. Back up these folders and then exclude these folders. Okay, so basically anything that you don't want in here like saved games, remove, links, remove. Uh, you can go through these folders. You can take all the defaults. Most of these sort of default ones will be empty anyways, so we can just remove a lot of that junk. The important folders are where are your pictures, where's your music, where's your videos, where are your documents, right? So that will mostly cover everything that you need to put in here. Uh, but again, everyone's going to be completely different as far as what they actually need to back up. For instance, me, I do a lot of video editing, so I have a complete hard drive in my computer dedicated to the videos that I'm currently working on. It's a real fast SSD hard drive. So for that one, I wanted to want to say add a folder. And then I want to go to this PC, uh, let's see, work drive, and then working folder. So we're going to choose that folder. So now I've added an additional folder to the set of folders that is being backed up. Once you're satisfied with all of the folders that you have here, you can click backup now and it'll start backing up the data. Now, if we pop back over to the Synology NAS, close out our file manager, our file station, what we're gonna see here is the LAN data jump up pretty significantly here in a second. So Windows is gonna start churning through and thinking about, okay, what are the files that I need to back up? Okay, go, and once it does that, we're gonna see the, the LAN utilization of the Synology NAS spike really high and stay there because it's copying you know, one point something terabytes, I think I have about 1.8 terabytes of data to back up, it'll start copying that over to the Synology NAS. At this point, just leave it because that's gonna take a long, long time and uh, the Windows backup will actually keep it backed up. Anytime you make changes to those files, it's sort of set it and forget it, just leave it and you will be good to go if you ever need to actually restore anything. Okay, so here we can see right now the LAN utilization has spiked up to about 120 megabits per second. That's pretty good. That is rocking and rolling. You're gonna see that sort of change speeds as you know a file that's really big ends up copying a lot faster than a whole bunch of tiny little small files. So don't worry about if you're not getting maximum speed or what you think should be maximum speed. It's doing its thing and it's backing up. As long as you see this happening, then you are good to go and your files are starting to be protected. The other important thing, uh, backup using file history, you also want to make sure that this automatically backup my files is set to on, and that way it's always going to be keeping your files in synchronization on the drive letter that you chose, which is your Synology NAS. So that's it for getting started with the Synology NAS. You now have your system set up to back up your files, and uh, if you ever lose your computer, your hard drive crashes, anything like that, you've got a safe, secure backup of all your important pictures and documents on this NAS device. Okay, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or comments or if you'd like uh, any special requests for what you'd like me to do with this thing. Put all of that down in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching.